Did you hear? Donald Trump was nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize. We went to CNN for comment. Oh dear. Oh man. We went to Rachel Maddow for comment. We went to the Washington Post for comment. True, in a decision sure to entice smirks from the media and political class, Trump's been nominated for brokering a landmark peace deal between Israel and the United Arab Emirates. This after bringing Serbia and Kosovo to the table as well. It's this thaw between Arab and Jew the Dems could never do, because dissent keeps the left relevant. But for the non-ideologue with no sunk cost in the past, Trump's the right man to unmuddle the Middle East. Imagine the poor CNN viewer always told how Trump hates Jews and Muslims, and yet it's Trump and his Jewish son-in-law bringing Muslims and Jews together. How can this be? Well, CNN viewers, it's their business model. Without division, CNN's got nothing. But let's not forget North Korea. The media wants you to. But remember before Trump, that nation was on the verge of nuking us. Then Trump upended that psychology. Now North and South Korea are kind of talking, and no one in Hawaii thinks they're going to die. Of course, Trump won't win the prize. He's despised by the cool kids at the cafeteria table, which is why they're more obsessed with hearsay and private conversations than his deeds, deeds that brought us less war and more peace. So now the whiners falsely blame Trump's rhetoric for the pandemic, as well as the violence in Democrat-led cities. It's all the left has left, distorting Trump's words because his deeds speak for themselves. Kennedy, I've been saying this all along. I'll take the most obnoxious person in the world if they bring peace to the world. Isn't that what Trump's doing? I think, actually, he does best on foreign policy. And uh, I agree. There's a lot about the way he comports himself personally and digitally that uh, is not that rad. And he, he leaves a lot to be desired with his personality. About 15 people said that during the Republican National Convention. Uh, but you do have to look at the proof in his foreign policy and give him credit where credit is due. And please don't try and diminish uh, that deal between UAE and Israel. That's, that's a very big deal because UAE is looking at a future beyond fossil fuels. And, you know, if that's what it takes to normalize relations with Israel is economic prosperity in the future, I will take that brand of peace any day. And, you know, you, if, if you take him out of it and look at the accomplishments, I have to say, he deserves the prize. Mm. Dana, from a scale of one being banana to 1,343, which means awesome banana, where would you put this piece of cord? <laughs> well, I think that, one, he certainly is more deserving of it than the aspirational geopolitical participation trophy that was given to <laughs> President Obama uh -oh. uh, even before he was in office. Um, so there's that. But I also think that this UAE-Israel deal, while some people might say, well, they weren't in conflict directly, et cetera, et cetera, I actually think that th this deal is important, but I think that what it portends for the future is even more important because you're going to have other countries within the Middle East follow hopefully follow the UAE's lead. Mm. Juan, it's uh, 39 years, I believe, uh, since uh, uh, we've initiated a It's been the longest, the only president in 39 years not to initiate a military conflict. You got to like that, right? Uh, you know, I think this deal, you know, potentially could be good news, although I noticed that the other Arab countries, the Palestinians, have not embraced it. But look. Not a country. <laughs> hundreds of people get nominated. Lot, hundreds of people get nominated for a Nobel Prize every year. In fact, the same right-wing politician who nominated Trump for this one also nominated him for 2018 for working with North Korea. And Kim Jong-un is still still firing missiles off and still trying to create trouble. So I, I, I go get it. In fact, us. in the Woodward book, in fact, uh, he's still doing it. And in fact, Not in the us. Woodward book, it, they have a they have a scene in which you say, uh, you get the president saying when he met Kim Jong Un he knew it was going to work it's like you meet a special woman in a second 
You know if it's going to happen. Oh, my God, this is too much. Yeah, it's called words, but we're trying to focus on the deeds. Jesse, mm -hmm. what do you make of this? Well, well I, I, I reviewed all of the winners since 1904, and here's my summary, Greg. <laughs> okay. There were some obvious choices. You have FDR, you have George Marshall, Mandela, MLK, and then you have some major snubs, Dean Acheson, Bretton Woods. I'd even have given it to 41 for the Cold War or even Reagan. And then you have people that you scratch your head, like Barack Obama, and then there's people you've just never heard. They push papers at the UN. Who knows what they did? They wrote a book or something. But if you look at the presidency so far, just objectively, if you lower the temperature on the Korean Peninsula, if you remove troops from Germany, from Syria, from Afghanistan and Iraq, you decimate ISIS, you do a peace deal with Arabs, and you do a peace deal with Kosovo, objectively speaking, that is enough to qualify you for this because the criteria done the best work for the fraternity of nations, the abolition or reduction of standing armies, and for holding the promotion of peace congresses. I agree with Kennedy. I'd send his mouth to The Hague, but <laughs> I would give the results the peace prize. <laughs> Somebody got to bed early because you did quite a lot of research there, Jesse. Johnny did it. No, Johnny. <laughs> Poor Johnny. He deserves a Nobel Prize for being your assistant. No kidding. <laughs>